Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here on uh, State of Florida versus Stephen Lorenzo. We have a couple of documents. Uh, looks like everyone is present. Everyone from the state, Mr. Lorenzo is present, and his standby counsel uh, are also here. And I received, thank you very much. Uh, it looks like you went out to the jail, perhaps, and spoke with Mr. Lorenzo with these two documents. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Let me ask. Mr. Sinardi, for the record, so that I can clear. Absolutely, I apologize, uh, Mr. Sinardi. Um, what uh, do you have an original for me? Yes, I do, Your Honor. May I approach? You may. Do you need to show it to the state? State, have you seen it? We have, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Your Honor, there should be three documents. There's uh, acknowledgement for the plea form. There's a waiver of his right to a jury, and then there's a DNA form. I need to advise the court that... Um, wait, wait, wait. I don't see the DNA. It should be the last page, probably. All right. There's the plea acknowledgement waiver of jury. I don't see it unless it's... No. That, that's important. We just executed, Judge. Okay, know. wait, here it is. It, it, no, no. It's just a standard DNA form. Mm -hmm. Okay. I take it back. Here it is. I found it. Did you find it? I did. I did. I did. Because I was no, no, you're good. You're good. All right. Um, Mr. Snardi, it sounded like you wanted to say something. Correct, Judge. If the court will note on the uh, entering of the plea and acknowledgement of rights form, I had to handwrite in and converting it from the Covington case that the court wanted to utilize as a template. Apparently there was an error made in doing that, and I didn't see that until 5.30 last night. So, and I went over that with Mr. Lorenzo. So I see, and I noticed that last night as well, so thank you. I appreciate that. There were actually two things. There was the information regarding an evaluation by a doctor. And the form that I received had fill in the blank kind of language. We, we have, at the time that I was doing the conversion to the plea form for Mr. Lorenzo, had no recollection of who the doctor was, and that was because it was in 2017. Yeah, you're right. I, I have all that now. Right, and it was Dr. Kamash, and the forms that I've given to the court reflects Dr. Michael Kamash. Excellent. Thank you very much. I was I was going to suggest that we write that in um, today, but you've already done that, so I greatly appreciate that. The, the last thing is, just so uh, on the signature line of the plea form, the plea form itself, for whatever reason, it ended up on the last page and not on the page that uh, um, there's six pages for the plea form. So I had Mr. Lorenzo, so there was never any issue. Had him sign it in two places on page five, but we just filled it in and also on I page see two. that now. Yes. And I, I don't I didn't like the idea that it was the signature line was on a. a you a, a you phone. read my mind. I don't uh, I don't like that. Uh, so just if we can. Do the same thing. That's fine. I can have them. Yeah, if you just add his signature on page one to be consistent with that, please. Mr. Lorenzo, they're going to bring you that uh, form that you signed, but your signature is on the second page kind of by itself. We're going to go ahead and let you sign just like you did uh, on the, the yeah, plea form. Turn it <laughs> While they're doing that, uh, is there anything that the state needs to say today before I address Mr. Lorenzo? Other than the, the, the oh, late policy, there's nothing else we need to say. Right. All right. And also in an abundance of caution, I'll go over uh, the fact that he wants to continue to represent himself. I know we did that thoroughly on Friday of last week, but I will uh, address that with him uh, first. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So now I have all three documents. Uh, I'm ready to go. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Mr. Lorenzo. Yes. Uh, first thing, as always, that I always address with you is your desire to represent yourself. We've done this a lot of times, and we did it thoroughly on Friday. 
but today is a very important day. I have some very important documents that I intend to go over with you today, addressing your desires in this case, and I want to make sure that you still, that you understand that you have a right. You have very competent standby counsel who have been at your side um, more so than sometimes I allow or have seen in other cases. Yes. However, this is a very important case and they have been at your side and they have greatly facilitated and assisted in this case and I appreciate them. Is it your intention at this time to continue to represent yourself? First off, I appreciate them too. And yes, I sure do. Yes. All right. And let me just ask you, no one has forced you or threatened you in any way to continue to wish to represent yourself, is that correct? That's correct. And you're not under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or prescription medications today? Nope. And finally, no one has threatened you in order to get you to represent yourself, is that correct? That's correct. All right. And that's consistent. You have uh, answered those questions the same both with Judge Kaiser many times and with me many times. So I am going to continue to allow you to represent yourself. There is something that I want to take up with you in the beginning, and it does relate to one of these documents, and that is your um, waiver of right to trial by jury and penalty phase jury. Right. I want to be very specific and make sure that you understand in this document that you had previously signed and actually just signed on the first page in front of me today that the language in this suggests that you understand that I alone will determine whether you will be sentenced to life in prison or whether you will receive the death penalty. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Yes. You acknowledge that, that you signed this form? Yes, I do. What I need you to understand right now is that although I have been cordial with you throughout these proceedings, that I will not hesitate to order your execution at the hands of the Department of Corrections if the aggravating circumstances outweigh any mitigating circumstances that are presented to me ultimately. Yes, I understand that. I'm counting on that. So yes, I am fine with that. Yes. See, that's what I don't understand when you say you're counting on that. Back in, back I gave you a 39 page mitigation letter and in there it explained fully some of my reasons why I would not contest the death penalty. And there was like five reasons in there. and. I place it on the court record on purpose. So I have no issue. I'm 65 years old. As far as I'm concerned, the, our creator, everybody is born from the womb, was born with the death sentence. And everybody in this room is on death row. We're all going to go sometime. I've made it 65 years old. I should have passed away 45 when I was 45 because I was overdosing on drugs so much. What you guys did when you arrested me gave me an extra 20 years of life, which is very interesting. But, right. but that's not the whole point of it. But um, uh, um, what was well, we're not there yet. And I, I, yeah. I have no doubt we will have further discussions on this. I just, right. before, the, what I intend to do is address your plea to these two charges today. Gotcha. But that will take us into then phase two, okay. which is the penalty phase. And I want to make sure that despite any cordial um, interactions I've had with you in the past, that I absolute, absolutely will not hesitate to sentence you to death. That's fine. Yes, that's absolutely fine. I All understand. Right. Yes. And I have, it's this, uh, this document that you've uh, indicated, mitigation notice. So I have it. I've reviewed it. It's a lengthy document. Right. All right. Um, we'll get to that. There's, there's some things that I need to discuss with the attorneys ultimately regarding phase two once we get there. So now I am going to turn to your plea acknowledgement and waiver of rights form. This is a six page form. Right. I'm taking a look at it now. I've looked at it previously, but I'm taking a look now at the one that you have actually signed and the state has signed. You've actually initialed every page. Is that correct? Yes, I should. The document, I'm holding it up. I know you can't read it from there. Right, but, but yes, this is the document. We did, uh, Mr. Sonati did that on purpose, so there was no uh, uh, 
no doubt on it. All right, I appreciate all of that. Looking at the last page, uh, it has your signature, it has Mr. Sonardi's signature, it has Mr. Gonzalez's signature, and there's been added on the fifth page, which is the last of the par 19 paragraphs, uh, opportunity for you to sign, which is where I believe you've signed today. Is that correct? Yes. All right. I need to swear you in if you'll raise your right hand, please. Sure. Do you swear any testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, you can put your hand down. There are two charges in this case. Right. They are exactly the same. First degree murder. The minimum mandatory sentence for each of those charges is life in prison without the possibility of parole. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. The maximum penalty is as I just discussed with you and which I indicated to you I would not hesitate to order is death. Yes, understood. All right. There's a number of things that actually rights that you are waiving by entering a plea to this. And before I proceed through the 19 paragraphs, I want to make sure that this is still your intention to enter a plea in fact a plea of guilty to those two very serious charges yes all right the most important thing it's all important but the most important thing is that we get on the record that you are freely and voluntarily entering this plea today Yes. So I want to ask you up front, has anyone forced you or threatened you in any way to enter a plea to these two charges? No. Has anyone promised you anything in exchange for getting you to enter a plea of guilty to these two charges? No. Do you understand that you are giving up your right to have a trial? Now that was in the separate document that I've already asked you about, right. but you are giving up your right to have a trial in this case in which you, or if you were to accept representation, would have the opportunity to cross-examine witnesses that the state may call to testify against you. You would have the opportunity to call witnesses on your own behalf in the guilt phase of this proceeding. Do you understand that? Yes. And do you understand that you are giving up those rights? Yes. If I accept your plea, at the end, there will be no trial in the guilt phase. You understand that? Yes. All right. Um, well, it covers it in here, and I'll go over it with you just to make sure. This is in paragraph 1 subsection A, that you understand that pursuant to Florida statutes, aggravating factors will be presented and argued by the state of Florida in an attempt to prove up and support their request for the imposition of a sentence of death with regard to each count of first degree murder, and that you understand in the trial of this cause with regard to the sentence that you will have the opportunity to present elements of mitigation justifying a sentence of life rather than a sentence of death with regard to each of the first degree um, murder charges and that the state of Florida in an attempt to prove up and support their request for the imposition of a sentence will be required to present aggravating factors with regard to each count of first degree murder. Also that you understand in the trial of this cause with regard to your sentence that you will have the opportunity to present elements of mitigation justifying a sentence of life rather than a sentence of death with regard to each of the first degree murder charges. You understand that? Yes. I think you've indicated to me before that you do not intend to do that. Is that still correct? What are you talking about? Mitigation? Mitigation. Yes. Uh, the 39 page mitigation letter is on the record so that you have to look at. I do understand that. That's Supreme Court case law. And, um, but I do not choose to, rep, uh, to present mitigation evidence, yes. 
Let me just ask you, this has not come up recently, but it is in the plea agreement. I have had no concerns about your competency mm -hmm. in representing yourself. In fact, after questioning you many times, I've found that you uh, understand what you're doing. You've pled, you've filed significant pleadings, all having uh, correct citations and relevant citations to uh, authority. And as I said, I have had no questions regarding your competency, but back in 2017, uh, Dr. Michael Gamash was required to evaluate you and determined you to be competent. Do you agree with that? Yes, very much so, yes. All right. <laughs> Let me just ask uh, standby counsel, have you had any questions, either one of you, about um, Mr. Lorenzo's competency in this matter? Your Honor, for the record, Brian Gonzalez, standby counsel in phase two. Uh, I have had zero concerns through my interaction with Mr. Lorenzo over the multiple years, probably three, in excess of three years, at any point in time that he was not competent to understand the charges against him, to uh, manage his own defense, and to accept uh, and, and understand answers to questions that he posed of me. Mr. Sonari, agree? You agree? Stand by counsel for first phase. That, that is correct. I concur with Mr. Gonzalez. Um, uh, Mr. Lorenzo has always been very uh, uh, lucid, very uh, intelligent, uh, responded appropriately to all the questions uh, that I posed, uh, had a very very understanding of these proceedings, and uh, had a rational basis as to why he wanted to enter these pleas, actually. Right. I, for the record, I have advised Mr. Lorenzo on more than one occasion and as late as last night not to do this and over my recommendation since I'm not candidly his attorney, apparently he is going to go forward. All right, I appreciate that and and I couldn't agree more. Um, Mr. Lorenzo, you may recall last Friday I started out by saying that there's a lot of things that a lot of people can say about you and think about you but intelligent well, not intelligent is not one of them. I don't know if that double negative works, gotcha. but Thank you. Um, Thank you, you appear to be intelligent. Why you chose this path, none of us will ever understand, but you are an intelligent person. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I, I guess you're welcome, but um, that certainly doesn't explain why we're, why we're here. No, that's true. Very true. You understand, uh, I know that I've gone over some of these things, but as I'm going through the written document now, some of this may uh, seem repetitive, but I do want to make sure that you understand in paragraph um, two that you are pleading open to the court and understand that there is absolutely no agreement as to what sentence you will receive for either of the two murders you are charged with. Yes. And again, you understand that the maximum penalty is death by execution in the Department of Corrections. Yes. You understand that you have a right, I'm moving on to paragraph three now. Okay. I'm not reading them all, but I just, I wanna touch, touch every one of them. Yeah, gotcha. You okay. understand that you have a right to plead not guilty and the right to be tried by a jury to determine whether you are guilty. You understand that you have the right to be represented by an attorney and if you could not afford one, that one will be appointed to represent you. In fact, we've already talked about standby counsel who has been appointed to stand by. You understand that you have the right to compel the attendance of witnesses on your behalf and the right to confront and cross-examine all witnesses testifying against you and the right to remain silent. You understand that if you plead no, no low contender aid, there will be no trial and you waive all rights. Well, let me just, um, he's actually pleading guilty. That is correct. That's, again, a carryover from the original form from Covington. Okay. Covington case. Okay. Let me just, um, I'm uh, concerned about, you understand it is your intention to plead guilty. Is that correct? Yes. 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 All right. I'm, I'm going to change an initial next to no low contendere. Guilty. <coughs> and I'm gonna initial it. All right, as to paragraph four, you understand that you have the right to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court within 30 days from the date of sentence, and you understand that if 
you wish to take an appeal and cannot afford one, that an attorney will be appointed to represent you in the appeal. Yes. You also, I appreciate that, there's some also uh, language here, understand that by entering the plea of guilty, you are waiving your right to appeal the rulings of the court with regard to any motions previously filed. However, should the court impose a sentence of death, there will be an automatic appeal to the Florida Supreme Court who will review everything that I've done in this case. Yes, I understand. Yep. Wait shortly for a um, factual basis. You understand that there are facts that the state could use to prove the charges against you. Yes. You understand it says no low contender again. I'm going to make the same change to guilty. And it now says, and initial it, it now says you understand that if you plead guilty, the judge may ask you questions about the charges which you have pled to, and that if you are not truthful in answering those questions, you may be prosecuted for an additional charge of perjury. Yes. Are you prepared for me to ask you questions about these crimes today? I'm, I'm prepared, but... Um we just got received the, uh, the factual basis for the plea from the state. And there's a couple of small things in there regarding Scott Schweikert's testimony that I'm not in agreement with. But the factual basis overall is dead on. All right. And, 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 and that's not totally unusual. In fact, in the Covington case, Mr. Covington um, was heard after the factual basis and contested many of the facts but that was not anything that created a, an issue for the Florida Supreme Court in their decision in the Covington case. So and I'm going to allow that to take place after whatever factual basis is placed on the record by the state. I will allow you, um, Mr. Lorenzo, to supplement or okay. state any disagreements that you have. Okay. And I'll address it at that time. Moving on to paragraph number seven, you, including deportation. Do you understand that? Yes. You understand that your plea could result in your driver's license being suspend, suspended or revoked if the charges for which you are pleading um, include an automatic mandatory suspension or revocation as required by law. I, I, that sounds silly, no, I'm sure, uh, particularly when I've gone over the sentences, the, the potential penalties for this, but it's required language, and I just want to, for the record, to reflect, reflect that you acknowledge that. Is that correct? Yes, I appreciate that, yeah. You won't be driving anywhere. <laughs> I agree, yes. You understand that your plea of guilty um, to a sexually violent offense or a sexually motivated offense, or if you have been previously convicted of such an offense, the plea may subject you to involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator upon completion of any prison sentence or jail sentence um, on this or any other case. Yes. Moving on to paragraph 10, you understand that your plea of guilty to a qualifying sexual offense or if you've been previously convicted of such offense um, may require you to be designated as a sexual predator and will subject you to mandatory electronic monitoring pursuant to section 948.30 paragraph 3. Yes. Despite the fact that there will no be no release and electronic monitoring. Right, yes. I, know. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yes, yes. Number 11, you understand that your pleading guilty will result in the court imposing the ma mandatory statutory costs you also understand that your plea may result in the court imposing certain other on this document? Yes. Yep. On page five and on page six? Yes, did it twice, yeah. All right, that takes me back to the two charges. Two counts, first degree murder. Mr. Lorenzo, how do you wish to plead to those two charges? Open, guilty. State, I need a factual basis. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I've taken the liberty of uh, putting the factual basis in a written document, which I've shared with the defendant. Uh, I, I don't believe he has, with, with the caveat that 
that some of the factual basis is based upon the testimony, the anticipated testimony of Scott Schweiker. Mr. Lorenzo may not agree with all the details, but with, with the He's giving up the right, though, for a jury to judge the credibility of Mr. Schweiker and determine whether they agree with Mr. Schweiker or not. Yes, Your Honor. So may, may I approach? You may, you? yeah, I did because I didn't see that up here. I see he has a copy. I appreciate the copy. Thank you. I, I've marked it as Exhibit 1, Composite Exhibit 1, comprised of four written pages and three photographs, A, B, and C, and the state uh, then would would submit those uh, at that is composite exhibit and I would like to read from the fact I, I am absolutely going to allow you to do that um, in fact I'm going to require you to do that um, I'm going to hang on to the exhibit which is now marked as states composite number one uh, pages one through four and photographs A through C but first I'm going to verify with Mr. Lorenzo that he has absolutely no objection to the entering of this factual basis and the exhibits attached to it into the record at this time. Is that correct? I have no objections at all. Yes. They will be admitted, and you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, the, the factual basis as to count one, count two, uh, 16 CF 8779 is as follows. Uh, on Friday evening, December 19th, 2003, Jason Gale House attended the Christmas party in Tampa. Mr. Gale House and his friends, including Justin Laughlin, Jeffrey Lohr, and Tony Bragg, decided to continue the evening at a local club, Club 2606, located at 2606 North Armenia in Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida. Mr. Gale House separated from his friends to socialize at Club 2606. As Club 2606 was closing for the night, now early Saturday morning, December 20th, 2003, Jason Galehouse informed his friends that he had met two men and he planned to leave with them. Jason Galehouse family and friends have never seen or heard from Jason Galehouse after leaving 2606 with those two men early Saturday morning, December 20th, 2003. Tony Bragg has previously testified that the defendant was a person who had spoken with Jason Gale House at Club 2606 that evening. Michael Walcolls. You want to say regarding the factual basis? Factual basis is basically very good. Um, the details of when, what. When you occurred, say very good, do you mean very accurate? Very accurate. Thank yes, you. very much so. <clears throat> They've got all the ma the basics in there. Everything. There's no, just the scenario of how things came to be is a little bit different, but it doesn't change the facts. Okay. And that's what I would just want to make clarify. Doesn't change the facts. I was there. Decisions were made. Things happened. Um, people don't know this, but other people were there too. I hate to say this, and uh, the state's not. Schweiker sure purposely left it out. And it was uh, with Michael, um, with uh, Mr. Gale House was a group decision, and uh, for many different reasons. And. Um, uh, and, but I it was in my house. We made that decision. I made that decision clearly. We did it as self-preservation because it could be identified. Um, and I take responsibility because they, but after we made that decision, they looked at me and they said, should we do this? And I said, let's do it. So I take responsibility for that. And I appreciate that. Yep. But it begs the question that I have, and that is why. Why? Okay. Do you want me to go into a little? I, I won't go into gory details, but anyway. I appreciate that. Yes, okay. But I would like to know why. Okay. I was identified as being speaking with Mr. Uh, um, Galehouse at the bar, and that's true. I didn't actually meet Mr. Galehouse. Mr. Galehouse had met another gentleman, the gentleman I invited back. Um, these two gentlemen, I did not know offhand. They, they were talking to Schweikert. I put this in one of my uh, filings with the court before. When I 
when they, they said they knew who I was, and then I realized who they were. And I said, okay, let's all go back to my house and we'll party and have a good time. Mr. Schweik, uh, Mr. Um, and we did all go back. We were going to go in the hot tub. We were going to do all that uh, going on. Um, and uh, at that time, Mr. Um, Galehouse, I get confused with the two. Mr. Galehouse agreed to want to do a, a I don't want to tarnish the memory of this kid, um, but agreed to want to do a group thing. We did some drugs. Mr. Galehouse did fall in the garage and cut himself. He actually did do that. That kind of stopped the idea of doing a group gathering or group sex, if you want to call it that. So he was with, the other two guys were bondage masters. I was a bondage master. Scott Schweikert was, a, was a, um, a green. He wanted, he was a wannabe. So we went into the house. Mr. Galehouse agreed to be bound. He said he's been done this before. He wanted to do that. So you want me to go into a little bit more? No. I, I, I just wanted to know why they're okay. dead. Oh, okay. Well, this is the reason. I'm going leading up to it. Mr. Schweikert wanted to get some um, experience. So we allowed him to do some stuff on Mr. Galehouse. Now, I don't know if I should add this, but um, Mr. Schweikert wanted to have a video done of him having experience as a master he was trying. And I was videotaping it while he was doing this. Mr. Schweikert um, got carried away. He lost control. He did that once before on a meeting I had with on a, on a, a group thing we did together once before and uh, scared the heck out of the other guy. But anyway, he lost control. The kids started to scream and get all upset. Um, we did the video. We put a gas mask on him because he did not want to be identified while being videotaped. So that's why the gas mask went on. Um, we realized that the kid was going to probably call the police on all of us. So we had a powwow, and we said, this kid can't leave. He's going to identify all four of us. So that was why the decision was made. See him coming from? Because he wound up hurting the kid. We didn't. It wasn't our intention to do that, but I don't think it was Mr. Schweiker's intention to do it, but he was green on what he was doing. And we left him to his own volition, and he wound up hurting the kid in his lower extremities. Who were the other people that were there? I knew them. I knew who they were because of, because of a bondage masters. Um, and I realized who they were because there was a, there was a, a organization that, well, bondage master organization type thing. And I was part of that, but I never met them before. And when they told me they were, they, that's why they knew who I was. They said, we know who you are, but I didn't know who they were. And then I said, okay, so come back. That's why I invited them back to the house. But I didn't know them, know them. I knew them. I know two names. I only know their first names because when you're in a, that type of club situation, you generally don't give out your last names. That's just not a, it's You meet, you greet. And Do you agree to provide additional information to authorities should they seek it? I don't have their names. The thing I have, I don't know how to contact them anymore. I remember one name was John. The other name was Chad or Chuck. I can't even remember. Chad or Chuck is the one that patched up Mr. Um, Galehouse's arm. And um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I don't know how far I should go with it. Yep. But, uh, what do you call, I'm, I'm trying to be careful, <laughs> Some, but I don't know their names because after this happened, they split. After the body was distributed and I did not dismember that body and there's a good reason for that and I can explain that to you, very good reason. I don't know that it's necessary. Okay, and, um, but it was done by the person that did this because he had medical experience. It was done by Schweikert and him. I stayed in front because it was a Saturday morning. There were people at my house in my neighborhood. People all stopped and said hello to each other. If I was in the back making noise, they would come back to find out if I was where I was. So I, homeowner, I stayed in the front with one of the other guys. And if anybody came along, I, I could say I'm having work done in my garage. I cannot tell you how much what I hear from you infuriates me. I know it does. I can tell. 
And but I don't know. You're asking me to tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Are there other homicide victims other than this evening? Are there any other homicide victims that have died at your hands? No. Is there any request from the state regarding any questions that I ask of this defendant? Uh, no, Your Honor, thank you. I'm going to find that there is a sufficient factual basis. I am going to find that Mr. Lorenzo's plea of guilty to two counts of first degree murder is entered into freely and voluntarily. I am going to accept his plea of guilty to these two charges at this time. We will now move to phase two, which is the penalty phase, and that is not something that we can complete today. We discussed last week the possibility of a mitigation counselor and we unfortunately received some information after that that counselor who was discussed is not available or would take over a year. This case has already lasted too long for us to wait a year to get to the sentence in this case. So I have asked whether there was someone else available is that uh, I am also, let me just say this, I'm going to adjudicate him guilty of the two charges. I'm going to impose all standard and statutory fees, fines, and court costs. He will have 30 days to appeal the, um, well, no, not until I sentence him, but um, I will still um, ask about the appointment of a mitigation specialist, Mr. Gonzalez, but also I will order the Department of Corrections to conduct a extensive um, pre-sentence investigation and that that be done within the next 60 days. Uh, well, you know what? They said they only needed 30? Yes, sir. When I called yesterday. All right. Well, I'll bring you all back after 30 when we have that in our hands. But I, at the same time, Mr. Gonzalez, were you able to see if there's anyone else that can be appointed that can do this in a more expedited manner? <clears throat> Judge, without getting into a lengthy dissertation, I, I can tell the court that one of the problems that exists as we speak is that, as you probably know, mitigation in cases across the country over the last three years has been stuck. I've accepted your plea. You've entered a plea of guilty to the two charges. Beautiful. As Thank you me. know, and as I've said several times, we now proceed to phase two. Thank you me. are absolutely still entitled to representation. Is there any chance that you are willing to allow Mr. Gonzalez to actually represent you in the penalty phase of your proceeding? No, I'm fine just the way that's. Yes. Okay. All right. Judge. Oh, wait, there's. Um, I, I did review that, but I did not go over the DNA. Um, for Mr. Lorenzo, I have up here um, a final document, which is the DNA uh, form, which is a standard form, which indicates that you do not believe that there is any DNA evidence out there that would any way show that you are not guilty of these charges. You've signed that form. You agree with that? I agree with that. All right. Yes. Um, I Judge, did. I have yes. a question yes. on the um, future dates, um, December 16th. And then starting January 17th through February 3rd, do you want me to strike those dates? Yes. The only date we need is that week that we just discussed for the penalty phase. February 6th. February 6th. So, so for the record, um, the first two weeks are struck in this matter. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me just, uh, I included it when I talked about you understand that I would not hesitate to sentence you to right. death. But just to be very clear, it is your intention to waive the benefit of a jury to determine your ultimate sentence in this case. Yes. And that is combined. There is This document here has both phase both. one and phase two. We've already passed phase one. I've accepted your plea of guilty. Okay. But now... You have a right to have a jury determine what your sentence should be, life or death. Mm -hmm. And it is your intention 
to waive a jury. Is that correct? That is correct. I will accept that waiver. We will proceed on the 16th with the penalty phase hearing. Judge, February 6th. February 6th. Sorry. In a quick discussion with the state, we uh, both suggested that maybe one interim status conference yes, in January absolutely. would be appropriate. Maybe that Monday of the first week. That's two weeks before. Or not, no, not Monday. If I'm going to pick up another trial. Uh, you can do it the... Well, that Monday was a holiday. I, I could do... Oh, that the 9th or 16th? Um, the 16th is a holiday, so... I could do it the 17th in the morning, even if I pick up a trial. I mean, it's just a status conference. That works we good. Is that enough time? That's... Yes. that's. Yes, Judge, I think Judge, be, that's two sorry. weeks. We have the Anthony Barker sentencing that they've asked for several hours on that morning. How about the uh, Wednesday? We can... Yes, absolutely. I would think What's the date? Safer. That's the 18th. 18th work for the attorneys? Ms. Lopez has suggested that since the PSI is due on January 20th, maybe we could do it the, the day soon after. Right that, after that. That would be Monday the 23rd, Judge. Monday the 23rd at 9 a.m. I don't need to check with uh, Mr. Lorenzo to see if he's available. Yes, that's true. Quite. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Lorenzo? Yes, two things. On the mitigation, so none of my mitigation is actually going to be used, right? It, against me that, that that's been put against well, well mitigation is not used against you but the court is going to <laughs> well consider. against my wishes i have an obligation right, to right, weigh right. Yes. the mitigating circumstances against the aggravating factors right and it is after that that i will make a decision no jury will decide i will decide right and again this is where i want you to realize that i will not hesitate if those aggravating factors outweigh any mitigation I will sentence you to death. That is why I want you to be on the bench trial, too, because I trust your judgment. I appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yes. So the mitigation packet, the mitigation that my mitigator put together, that, none of that's going to be used. That's all I'm asking. It'll be considered. Here. I will it? weigh it. I have to weigh it. Well, I have my to mitigator? weigh it against the aggravating uh, circumstances. Oh, so you're going to use what I'm asking not to be used? Yes, I have to. I don't want that. Then I will listen to you. I will give you an opportunity representing yourself to make argument to me as to what the appropriate sentence is, and I will greatly consider that. Okay, because the law specifically says that if I don't want any mitigation from my myth that was put together for me personally, now if the state wants to or the court mm. wants to do it independently, they need to do their own investigation. Well, we will cross that bridge when we come to it, and we will ferret through all the information we have at the hearing. And if I ultimately determine that there is something that I should not consider, particularly because you do not want me to consider it, I will make that decision at that time. And will I have time to review the PSI? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we will make sure that he gets a copy of the PSI. We are coming back to court a couple days later, but I want him to get it as soon as possible prior to the next. Right, so the minute it's ready, we will get it to him at the jail. Does that suffice? Yes. All right. That's good. Yes. All right. Thank you all very much. We'll conclude these proceedings. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. I know. Okay. I was going to take a short break. Yeah. <clears throat> I just want to make sure nothing up here is well like this. So I need the food. Oh my god. I need that from here.